How's that saying go? Double your monks, double your fun. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I will be enjoying a, or at least I'll be drinking, a Belgian double style beer out of someplace. The USA, Boca Raton, Florida. Barrel of Monks Brewing, their Abbey Terno Double. First, a little bit of an exploration, and maybe to begin with that, begin that, or precede that, a little bit of an apology. Um, I tend to do things best the first time. Little practice, just shoot from the hip, and it turns out most of the time. However, especially on this channel, I try to present knowledge information correct information and uh, I definitely haven't I haven't knowingly presented anything wrong like I haven't lied I just haven't done my homework or the homework I should have done on some of these beers and that really doesn't do service to what I intend this channel to be I'm a nerd. I'm a, I'm a geek. I, I like finding out things about things and sharing those with things. And that's that's the whole point of Chewing the Brew is sharing knowledge about beer, my experience of beer. Yes, there's the experiential side, but also there's the knowledge side. There's information. Why I enjoy beers is primarily about taste, but there is an aspect of, oh, what's the science? What's the history? What? How does this fit together? And so I need to do a better job of that. So I'm going to start by exploring or explaining from this very big encyclopedia I have. <laughs> it's all about beer. The uh, Oxford Companion to Beer by uh, Garrett Oliver, or edited, edited by Garrett Oliver at least. Uh, it's written by a whole series of authors. Um, I believe Garrett Oliver is head brewmaster at uh, Baltimore Brewery or a brewery in Baltimore. Um, anyways, very wise man. You can find, he does not have a YouTube channel of his own, but he is frequently on relatively big name media sor sources talking very authoritatively and very, very um, approachably, very knowledgeably, but very like understand, you, you can comprehend what he's saying. He speaks in every man speak um, on beer. Highly recommend if you find a beer video with Garrett Oliver, watch it. It's usually going to be entertaining and it'll be informative too. Anyways, what is a double? A double is a traditional belt or is a Belgian style. It was, uh, the modern double style was essentially invented by the Trappist Brewery of West Mall in 1926. It is a brown ale and it was brewed alongside the monk's own table beer, which was a low beer or a relatively low alcohol beer. No, monks weren't drunk all the time. They're the beers the monks drink for the most part, um, like their daily beer, is a, a lighter beer. Um, not to say all their beers they drink are light, but yeah. Um, anyways, so it was a monastery West Mall that kind of invented the style. But it is a brown beer different from other German and uh, England, English in particular, brown beers in that its brown color comes from sugar, not the roasting color of the grains. This produces a very, very different character to the beer. Obviously, if your flavor is coming from burned sugar, that flavor is very different from burned, burned grains, right? Or roasted grains at the very least. So, um, unlike German and British brown beers, double gains much of its color, not for roasted malts but from a highly caramelized version of a sugar syrup called candy sugar, C-A-N-D-I, candy sugar. Whereas roasted malts tend to give flavors that recall coffee and chocolate, candy sugar gives an aromat aromatic reminiscent of, oh, gives an aromatic, got it, sorry, that's a noun, <laughs> not an adjective, gives an aromatic reminiscent of burnt sugar and raisins, because it's burnt sugar. Anyways, that is is what is going to be giving this beer its color. So I will not be expecting traditional roast malt flavors in this beer. I will not be expecting traditional roast malt flavors in this beer. I will be expecting um, dark fruit flavors in this beer coming from that brownness. Uh -huh. And hey, while I'm opening this up, could y'all 
hit a like, hit the like button, and uh, hit the follow button if you're not, or the subscribe button if you're not already. Greatly appreciate that, you know. Um, plus that way you can get notified and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's all in pursuit of the uh, letting YouTube know that that my content is worth sharing, that sort of thing. Anyways, ah, here we are. Um, I did take this out of the refrigerator relatively recently. However, I ran it over under a tap of water. So, no, not like hot water, but not cold water either. Put pressure in there. Let's see what it does. Oh, it does that. Nice. Okay, let's pour it. Yay, complications. <laughs> okay, good. The head's staying down. Put that aside. Wipe my hands off. On second thought, putting another tap of water probably wasn't the best choice, but generally speaking, um, Belgian beers, you should expect a lot of head. That's just... Um, they are not carbonated usually. It is usually the yeast action that produces their enthusiastic effervescence. So despite the color on this coming from roasted sugars, uh, there is still definitely a bready aspect. And this is not a traditional Belgian um, Abbey double. This is a style beer made by a U.S. brewery. So um, I'm not expecting this to be traditional. I'm expecting this to be tasty and um, related to. Let's put it that way. So color. It is a pretty color. It has almost a redness to it, but it's, it's dark brown and it's not clear because it's dark, I'm thinking. But it has a real, almost like a ruby shade to it that's quite fetching. It's a nice day outside. There's actually blue sky overhead, but clouds around. It's been very nice almost all day. I'm definitely picking up some candy. Now, remember, it's not candy, C-A-N-D-Y sugar. It's candy, C-A-N-D-I sugar. I'm not expecting candy, but it is sugar. And I'm definitely picking up with um, kind of the breadiness, there is definitely a, a sugar-esque note. The head's hanging around pretty well, too. Um, and it is rocky. I don't know if I've said that in a little while. The head is cream-colored, almost dark cream. Um... There's also some fresh fruit smells in there. Like it smells like, it smells very interesting. It, sm it smells inviting. Um, the breadiness is largely gone now. Now it's um, grape and like ripe plum maybe. What else is in there? It doesn't smell like new car, but certain cars I've gotten into have smelled like this. And that might be the candy. <laughs> candy wrappers build up their own odor inside cars, right? That's probably it. It's almost, it's not red licorice. It's a, there is like a, a candy, a candy note. That's interesting. I wonder if that, tran or I wonder how that will translate to the uh, taste. Oh. oh, very interesting. Huh. Okay. Definitely not a one-note wonder. Definitely has kind of the traditional Belgian monastery funkiness. You're going to recognize that. If you've had an Abbey beer, like an actual Abbey beer, you're going to recognize that kind of funkiness in here, too. That's good. That's good. 
I'm guessing that comes from the yeasts that were used. That's probably where most of the, the family resemblance is going to be coming from. Initial, there's kind of this dry bite. Almost herbal, but like uh, parsley or something. Um, kind of a bright without being too bright. And uh, then we have this kind of just this funk that, that runs all the way through. And it stays pretty dry. The, the, roasted, the, the, the roasted sugars that would have gone in here would have been pretty well burned. So when the sugars are burned, they don't actually lend that much. It's not like adding a bunch of sugar to a beer to make the yeast happy to up your alcohol content, right? It's adding mostly flavor. There, there are little bits of sugar left, but it's adding mostly flavor and color, not more fun for the yeasts. Um, or food for the yeast, happy fun time. <laughs> uh, so I'm not, I'm not really picking up like a really, it's not really alcoholic. It's only, it's only a 7% ABV. So it's definitely a, a, a stiffer beer, but it's not really stiff. It's not even yet in imperial territory. It is, it's interesting. It's very interesting. It's almost like I'm tasting the, the burned sugar, but it's playing nicely along with everything else because there are a lot of strong flavors going on here. There's some, maybe some prune in there. If the, 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 the dried fruits, oh, okay. Yeah, dried apricot kind of midway through. There's definitely dried fruit flavors going on here. There's that uh, kind of herbal bite at the beginning. There's that funkiness kind of running all throughout. There is, kind of in the middle, this dried fruit character, uh, and what else? there's a finish, almost a breadiness to the finish. I think that's where the malt, where you finally start tasting the malt, is when the other, like the initial flavors kind of start to fade, you're left with this nice warm funk, traditional to a Belgian uh, Abbey style, and there's a nice, just a real subtle breadiness that finishes, that works, excuse me, <laughs> that works very nicely. This is a pretty good beer. Having had, you know, Chimay's and I've had the West Mall uh, six, I want to say, one of the lighter West Malls. Um, uh, having had a, a selection of uh, Belgian, like actual Trappist and Belgian Abbey beers, though it has been a year maybe since I've had. Um, this is definitely recognizably in the family, so yay. It also is, it's kind of Americanized, I would say. It, it has that kind of bite up front, and it feels kind of big a little uh, in the middle. Um, but all the recognizable parts are there, and I like it for that. It's pretty good. This was actually a gift. This uh, Barrel of Monks Abbey Turno Double was actually a gift for me. Uh, from my wife for my birthday last year she got me a uh, like two boxes from the rare beers club rare beers and I think this is the first one that I've opened actually I do believe the others are all sitting up in my cupboards waiting patiently um, and they came in boxes and yeah it's it's kind of pricey it was a gift it was as special as a splurge it was a um, special occasion she knew I like beer obviously <laughs> It's not like I hide it. <laughs> and uh, this was one of those that came in that. Um, otherwise, I doubt I would have found something like this on my local store shelves. And if I had seen it, I probably would not have bought it. Um, just because. But having had it and having the opportunity to have it, I am happy for that. So, yay. Yay me. And I'm going to go share some with my wife. <laughs> Anyways. This is the Barrel of Monks Brewing Abbey Turno Double. That color and that flavor thanks to burned sugar. I'm Matthew. I'm chewing the brew. I'll catch y'all on the flip side.